Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm Daniel King, and I'm excited about leading people to Jesus. And today I am in Tanzania, just finished participating in Operation Decapolis, which is an effort by Christ for All Nations to do multiple crusades at the same time. And so I was in the city of Iringa, and there were actually five crusades that were, were being done all at the same time. And today I have with me one of the evangelists who was a guest in one of the other Decapolis cities. Gary Smith, thank you for being on the Evangelism Podcast today. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. It's an honor to be here. So tell me, what city were you in and what did you see God do in that city? Yeah, so I was in the city of Inveya, Tanzania. And man, we saw the Lord just do great things. And the, one of the very first testimonies on the first night was a, a gentleman that had been deaf for seven years in both ears. And he came up there and testified that the Lord opened his ears and he just couldn't believe it. And uh, you know, we saw uh, tumors coming out of people, uh, but the most beautiful miracle were just the, the thousands of salvations of people giving their lives to Jesus. So it was an absolutely incredible time. And so what is the biggest memory that you'll take back with you from Tanzania? Wow. The, the way that I could best describe the, the best memory would be just to see all of, of the faces with tears just running down their face. Um, to me, that just impacts my heart to see the tears of people um, when they experience the love of Christ. Uh, whether they're believing for a miracle, whether they receive a miracle, or maybe if they just had received the salvation. But to see the, the tears fall down their faces is probably something that impacts me the most. And you have a, a heart for evangelism. We're both here at the invitation of Christ for All Nations, evangelist Daniel Kalinda. And you had a little bit of a, a miraculous way that God connected you with Christ for All Nations. How did that happen? Yeah, it's, you know, they, uh, they often ask me, like, how did you get connected with CFAN? And to this day, I just think it's like, it's just a miracle. And really it was, uh, I had a friend of mine that uh, just encouraged me. He was going on the first trip uh, to Obama show with uh, Paul Maurer. And, um, and in the meantime, he was just raising funds. And so I just felt led to help him get there financially. And then on his way back, he... Uh, then had taken an internship with Cross for All Nations. I went and had lunch with him one day and he was encouraged me to try to come to the School of Evangelism. Just wasn't a good timing for, for me. And so it's just burning on my heart for, oh mercy, um, I'd say a couple months. And then he's like, well just write Cross for All Nations a email, tell them who you are, what you've done, and what you, what you would like to do. And I was like, no, I don't want to be that person, you know. Uh, to send just a random email of some, some guy that they'd never met. And so this went on for about another two and a half weeks. And uh, like every day it was just on me. And um, I was like, no, I don't want to do the email. And so finally, one day, I just said, kind of had a bad attitude about it. I was like, all right, Lord, if you want me to send this email, I'll do it. And so I got onto the computer, typed up an email, just explaining who I was. Uh, what I've done and uh, you know my interest of doing the trucks and um, about two weeks later I was out on a church property we had just bought some church land because we were in the process of building a church and I was on a piece of equipment I had a, a missed call and uh, I stopped around lunchtime and I noticed that I had a voicemail and a missed call so I checked it and immediately when I pressed play on the uh, voicemail I was covered with the presence of God, like the top of my hair was standing up all the way down to my toes. It was incredible. And immediately he said, hey, Gary, this is um, Chris Garcia, um, Daniel Kalenda's you know, sec um, um, assistant. And I was like, no way, this is not true. You know? So I listened to the rest of the voicemail. And uh, right after that, I went ahead and just called um, Chris Garcia back. And he's like, hey, Gary, you know, we got your email. You know, we, we loved everything about it. We'd love to get to know you. We just had an opening for the Port, uh, Port Harcourt, Nigeria uh, trip. Would you like to come? And I said, I would be honored to come. So I went home that night, applied for my visa, bought my plane ticket. And less than two weeks later, I was in Port Harcourt, Nigeria for the first uh, truck um, outreaches with the gospel trailers. 
And so tell me some of what happened during that outreach in Port Harcourt and how it impacted your life. Here, can you? Yeah, just take Yeah, so during, during that time when we were in Port Harcourt, I was there with Paul Maurer. And Paul Maurer was um, the one that was kind of doing the grading, critiquing us. And uh, so I'd never been to Africa. That was my first time in Africa. And what an experience going to Nigeria. And I remember the first time driving to the first outreach, we were being escorted by the police and we were in the opposite lane going against traffic, head on traffic. And I was thinking, man, I just wanna just make it there, you know? And so when we got there, just preached. And that first time I was pretty nervous, um, but the moment that I began to just speak and start talking about Jesus, there was just a, a calming that came over me and that night was just something that sparked something inside of me like man this is what i really i believe that i was born for like i had i've always felt like an evangelistic calling i didn't know how i was going to get there what it was going to look like but i just knew like there's something that i'm supposed to do and i, I was never the one to want to be public speaking or or anything like that and to be honest with you i had a i battled a lot of like insecurities and uh, that's then one of the main reasons why um, the website is called know your identities because it's like something that i battled um you know feeling like i wasn't the smart enough one i wasn't raised in church and i didn't go to bible college and I had all these reasons but my father-in-law he's a he's a pastor and he's a, a wonderful man of god and, and he always would say this he said you know Gary, the bible says that they'll use the foolish to confound the wise and that and in that context it kind of gave me some hope you know and um, the moment that i really understood who i was in christ like romans 8 14 and 8 15 and really about that sonship is when i really began to like you know what maybe i'm not the most qualified maybe i don't have the most elegant speeching uh, the speech but you know what like i love jesus and i know what he's done for me and it's just it's like it burns inside of me and so from that moment in port hardcore really had sparked something. And now well, I have been a guest with um, Christ for All Nations for right now going on three and a half years or so. And it's just beginning, you know, as as we've been a part of this decade of double harvest, every six months is just getting, it's growing exponential. And it's just an honor to be here in Tanzania with Christ for All Nations. It's an honor to, to serve with yourself, you know, uh, an amazing ministry that you have, amazing calling. And um, sometimes I have to like ask myself, like, wow, how did I get here? What am I doing here? But it's amazing. Yeah. It is amazing what God is doing. I think God is looking for people who are willing. And when he finds people that are willing to do whatever it takes, God gives very quick promotion. And that's what you've seen in your life. And I think it's just starting. God has a lot more in store for you in, in the future. And one of the things that you're, you're working on, which I, I really love, is building a trailer that has the side that folds down and becomes a platform that can be used to preach the gospel in America. You know, we come here to Africa, thousands of people get saved, but the United States needs revival just as much as Africa. In fact, some places in the United States probably have a lower percentage of Christians than here in Tanzania. And so if we're going to reach America, we, we've got to go look for strategies that can reach people. And, and so God put it on your heart to, to build this trailer. Kind of tell me how that vision came to be. And, and then tell me how you've built the trailer, how it's all come together. Um, because I know we have a lot of listeners that, that want to do different uh, things. And, and you know maybe someone will be inspired to build their own trailer. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's something that came to me in 2016. We are on our way back from a meeting in Florida. Uh, I believe it was one of the Jesus in, uh, Images meetings there in, in 2016, and we we're coming through Mobile, Alabama, coming through the tunnel. And I remember my wife and daughter were sleeping, and I was driving. It was kind of late in the night, and immediately when I came up out of the tunnel, right there in Mobile. Um, I instantly heard the Lord say cities for Jesus and I was like all right Lord like what does that mean and I just saw us going from city to city 
And this is something that has been burning in our, my heart for a long time uh, of, of America, just going from different cities. And I didn't really understand how it was all coming. But like you had said, um, the moment we said yes, you know, the Lord begins to just to say, okay, here's the next step, here's the next step, and it just keep, continues to unfold. And so in that moment, I didn't have all the details. I just knew what he had shared with me. And I was like, all right, Lord, how do I get there? And progressively, he gave me more and more. And so um, I met up with a friend of mine. He had kind of the same vision um, of going from city to city. We began to brainstorm. And then the things that we have done with Crossroad Nations, with the gospel trucks, I said, man, this is what we need. We need something like this in America. And so I kind of took that concept. And I didn't actually have a, a motorized container. Uh, so we just built a trailer from the ground up. It's 30 foot. And um, so in when we came into Arusha just last year, I, um, it, we just had a flat trailer, that's all we had. And I said, okay, let's take a step of faith. And so I ordered the steel. I asked my buddy, I said, let's order the steel. We ordered the steel and um, it was about $5,000 to get all the material. And um, I, didn't, I didn't really have the money, but I said, we're gonna take this step. Order this deal within 24 hours. This is incredible. I, I literally, was like, I could not believe it. 24 hours, less than 24 hours later, I received a check for $5,000 to cover the amount of this deal. So then I came to Africa with Cross Realm Nations. We did the boot camp initiation in Arusha. A friend of mine had had it all framed up and so now we've got it all together. It's a, it's a um, fully mobilized. We have everything that we need. We have a generator, sound equipment. And so we just take this thing from city to city. And what our heart is, is to get local pastors uh, to come together in unity and, and host these events to where we can do them outdoors in a non-church setting. Um, we were just in Newport Ritchie area and also St. Petersburg area, Florida. And we did nine straight days. It was absolutely incredible. We were out um, outside the, the church on a, where the, the public park was. And so we had just random people. And also on this last trip that was beautiful is we actually sent a team of nine people a week in front of us to evangelize. And some of these were my friends and some of them came from uh, the ramp ministry. And so we, we put them up in a hotel and uh, we gave them a little bit of money for food and for the day. And they just went out every day evangelizing, built the expectation, kind of like what, what we're doing here uh, with the initiation prior to um, the Crusades. And so uh, here just in a couple of weeks, we'll be in Ohio. Uh, we're going up there uh, July 9th through the 18th. And every day we'll be doing a meeting outdoors. And so. Prayerfully, in Jesus' name, we're going to be full-time hitting the streets in America and just seeing a, a revival, miracles, signs, wonders, salvations. Yeah. What do you see God doing in the future? What, what's the vision? That, what, what do you want to, to see happen in your life and ministry? Yeah, the biggest thing that I want to see in, in my life and for the ministry, for that matter, um, is to really see uh, America, you know, especially where we live. I live in Mississippi and it's, you know, the Bible Belt. Everyone talks about Jesus, but very seldom are people really sold out. They, they, they know about Jesus, they, they can quote some scriptures, they know how to be churchy, but their, their lives are not what it means to, to be a Christian. And my heart is, is that people encounter the love of Jesus. You know, I, not being not raised in church, I met my wife, we got married in 2005, and she was a pastor's daughter, and if it wasn't for her, I don't know where I'd be, you know. Um, I was I was in military, I'm still in the reserves now, but military, and I, I was headed to go to special warfare, and so I would have just been a knucklehead probably had I not met my wife, but she really brought me to the Lord. And my heart is that people really encounter Jesus, because when we truly encounter Him, our lives will never be the same. Our desires will change. And that's, that's really my heart, is that even, even people in the church, you know, even you've been in this a lot longer than I have, but you can probably understand that 
you know, the very scripture says, on that day many will say, Lord, Lord, I did all these great things. You know, and he says, depart from me. I, I don't know you. And that, that breaks my heart because there's a, a, a minister that I know that's like, you know what, that was me. That was me. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you better get it right. And how many people are like that? You know, and, and I don't want it to be on my heart like, Gary, you knew about Jesus. You really encountered Him. You didn't tell me. So wherever I go, I want to truly share the love of Jesus, to be that example. Say, hey, you know what? If your life is not totally surrendered, and you got to have it totally surrendered to Jesus. Because that's, at the end of the day, that's the only thing that matters. And that's really my heart. It's my heart for, for the ministry, the heart for America, and for the nations. You know, not just America, but Mexico, Africa, wherever. You know, I, I really love Isaiah says, who will go, here I am sending. And that's always been my heart. And uh, i just kind of been taken one day at a time. And it's beautiful to see what the Lord has done in such a short period of time. Okay, I want you to imagine that you are out on your, your truck. The platform is down. You've had some music to attract people. And so you have a, a little group of people that have gathered around, maybe about 20 or 30 uh, people in a park that have gathered around and you've got five minutes to share the gospel with them And so I want you to give me a five-minute presentation of how you would share the gospel with those people Yeah, the the quick would be is just yeah. to say the reality of second uh, Second Corinthians 6 2 and now is the day of salvation and none of us are promised our next breath We're not promised our next heartbeat uh, our days are very numbered, and the reality of it is, is that you and I, we could die this very moment. And if you don't have a relationship with Christ, where would you spend eternity? And have have that in that moment to share with them, you know, um, kind of like what we what we preach a lot is, you know, there's three specific days on God's calendar: a day for us to be born, a time for us to die, and the most important one is a day of salvation. And we're all breathing right now because we're, we're in the natural, we're breathing, we have life. The very reality is that you could die in the next five minutes. You could die when you leave this park. And, but the beautiful thing about it is, is today, Jesus had paid a high price for you and for me. It says, for whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you believe in the heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you can be saved. You can spend eternity with him. And, and so much more, there's so much more to life than just living. We're not living if we don't have a life surrendered to Christ. We're just kind of going through the motion. And so in those five moments, I would just explain the reality is that tomorrow's not promised. Only right now is promised to us. And if you don't know Jesus, then here's the opportunity to meet Jesus, to encounter Him. The fact that Jesus came to the earth, died a horrific death, you know, not only did he die, because if he if he died and didn't raise, then it would just be a crucifixion. But he died, hallelujah, he died, rose again, and that and in that moment we have salvation, we have freedom, we have everything through the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so that's how I would try to present the gospel in those five minutes is is that that um, we we're we're promise our, our birth, we're promise our death, and the most important day is a day of salvation and that could be today that could be today if you're listening now and you don't know jesus today is a good day to give your life to jesus well why do i want to give my life to jesus well because if we don't give our lives to jesus totally completely to him then you and i we would be held accountable for every decision that we have ever made but the moment we ask jesus into our heart the bible says that all things become new he forgives us of all of our sins everything that we have done and now we have been born again and we have a renewing of our mind. And now the next step is to get planted into a local church. Get connected to Evangelist Daniel King, his amazing man. Get connected to you. Get connected to people that can disciple you. Because I love what, uh, I think Evangelist Paul says that, you know, um, with the ministry of Christ Foundation, he said, we don't come here just to make disciples, or um, we don't come here just to make converts. We come to make disciples for Christ. And that's what it's all about. The moment you give your life to Jesus, all things become new. Now you get connected. Now you begin to walk this life out of Christianity. If someone wants to know more about your ministry or, or support you in 
doing crusades. Uh, what's your website? How can people find you? Yeah, so our website is knowyouridentity.org and we have a website there. We're also on Facebook. Um, the ministry is called uh, Sonship Ministries, Know Your Identity. Um, and so yeah, you can reach out to us on the website or on Facebook. Yeah, so if you're listening, I encourage you to go and, and support the ministry of, of Gary Smith, a tremendous ministry. Uh, you've also done crusades down in Chiapas, Mexico, which is tremendous. Tell me some about those crusades, what it took to organize them, and, and what God did in Chiapas. Yeah, down in uh, Chiapas, we had uh, a local friend of ours who's been a missionary down in there for, oh mercy, over 20 years. And um, so I used to travel with an evangelist and he did bigger crusades and he passed away about five years ago. And um, so I reached out to the pastor and uh, we were just talking about doing an, an outdoor crusade. And so we began to do the, the, the logistics part of it. And um, that was the first crusade that I actually did by myself. And uh, we did it outdoors. We did a three, three night event out in a city park. It was beautiful. Uh, you know, we uh, we seen uh, about 2,000 people there on the biggest night. Um, I don't remember the number of salvations, and but there were salvations. We had uh, demons coming out of people. Uh, in fact, this was this. I've never experienced this before. Maybe you have. I re really kind of caught me off guard. So after I had got done preaching one night, I came off the back of the platform, and there was a gentleman there, and he called me. He called me by name, and he said, Gary. And I said, yes, sir. And I turned around, and he said, pray for me. And so in the moment I stuck my hand out to start praying for him, he started boxing me. He started, like, throwing punches. And I was like, what in the world is going on? Well, now I realize, you know, that it was a demonic spirit. And so, and I just remember every time that I say the blood of Jesus or in the name of Jesus, this thing got more violent. And it just began to get more and more. And he never, never hit me, but we were super close. And I was just staring at him. Long story short, um, after a couple of moments, I felt the Lord say, okay, now you're released to, to lay hands on him. And I did. The power of God came, touched him. I mean, he just went flying down to the ground. And uh, he was out for a long time. And in that moment, so we have like this amphitheater, city street, and there's a bar right behind it, right? The bar was playing music. And the moment that that gentleman went down in the power of God, the whole entire bar started cheering. Well, I got the rest of the story. He had been a local drunk, and the Lord just touched him. When he got up, he couldn't even like walk hardly at all. The power of God was so strong. I helped him up. He sat on um, the semi, like where you step up to get to the door. He stood there for about 20 minutes. And so, uh, but the preparation of that was done by the local pastors and uh, the missionary and they did a lot of that for us and um, you know, we kind of just showed up preached the gospel and uh, we had a worship team come in they traveled actually far away they traveled eight hours from Comitán area and they came into the city that we were in and uh, i love mexico i wish i spoke spanish but i love mexico yeah i've done lots of ministry in mexico my parents were missionaries in ciudad juarez right across from el paso texas so I grew up working there, and, and uh, Chiapas is a great place to go. They need Jesus down there, so that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being on the Evangelism Podcast. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much, Evangelism. I appreciate it. Daniel King is on a mission to save one million souls a year, but he can't do it alone. Would you consider sowing a financial seed today? To give, please visit www.kingministries.com.